What is in a dressing? Your dressing could tell us a lot about you. It could tell us you're trying to be casual. It could tell us you're trying to make an impression. It could tell us where you're coming from and where you're going to. It's not different with African dressing. The trouble is, do you know what it means? The dress you're wearing. Welcome to the summon, the African summon, where we connect you to Africa and African culture. In today's edition, we'll be talking about the significance of the dressing in the Grasper region of Cameroon. Our guest is Chinto Chato Collins. He is a title holder and a leader amongst his people and has an understanding of the dressing of his people. Do invite your friends, neighbors and loved ones and join us as we explore African dressing and return to our roots. Welcome Chinto. Thank you very much, Manon. It was a pleasure for me to be on the African summer. A great pleasure to have you back. And so tell us what's new about your people. What can we learn about the people of come today? Okay, the first thing I want to say is there's a popular adage which says, dress the way you want to be addressed. Oh, neat. My people, my people come from the grass fields of Cameroon. They can be more described from the western highlands of Cameroon, which is a combination of the people of the family cave, the Pamuns, the Tikaris, and so on, uh, in the grass fields of Cameroon. This is in uh, West Africa. And my people are precisely calm. Uh, the, the neighboring areas are people such as the Stok people, the Bakut people, the Bali people, the Bankon people, and so on. And, so on. So, and of course, the Ayom people. And when you think about my people, the first impression that might come to mind is the colors and then the sounds and much more because the country of Cameroon is known for a lot of things, one of which is, first of all, the sounds. You think about Cameroon, you want to think about the Maduri Bangos and so on and so forth. Uh, you want to think about the Roger Miller, the Etos, and so on. It's much more of music, the sounds and the sights. So my people have something very special as far as their dress is concerned. The dress, the way they want to be addressed. The dress, the way they want to be seen and understood. The dress to represent the environment from which they come. The, 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 all aspects of their culture, their history, of their movement, and all other aspects that uh, connect with their very being. Thank you so much for that. So um, my question to you is, what's the significance of the dressing in the Grassfield region? Mama, it might interest you to understand that the evolution of dress was born, started with nakedness. And I think we African people might uh, have come to start clothing ourselves not more than 200 years back. But the distinguishing aspect of this is when we got into dress, we didn't just get into dress ordinarily. We were quite sophisticated. If you look just for instance at what I am wearing. And so our dress represents much more of us. The significance represents really us. The history of most of the people of the basket. And the history of most of the people is represented by a lot of movement. Movements that were triggered either maybe by wars, or quests for, for more security and safety, quests for fertile lands, quests for a better life, and quests for some form of freedom. People wanted to be free to be able to express themselves in their culture and their own ways of life. Yes, I want to say my, the, the people's dress is part and parcel of the evolution of their lives. And the evolution of their lives is represented by the history, the movement of the people from one part of uh, one country, one land to another. And by these movements, different elements of the cultures of those people were picked up and added to the whole body of what you finally call as dress in the Western Highlands of Cameroon. So the dress in terms of significance represents that history of movement it represents the environment, the environment in which they are living. It represents social positions and functions 
it represents it represents really a lot. And so the dress is not just another way of just covering your body. It is really what I began by saying, dress the way you should be addressed or the way you want to be addressed. And so the dress to us is much more than meets as we will be discussing the book of this program. Much more than just covering your nakedness. Uh, what are the various forms of dressing you have in the Grassville region? Okay. The various forms of dress would vary between uh, male, male members of the society. They would vary with female members of the society. That's the first uh, aspect when you come to distinguish the forms. The other aspect when it comes to distinguishing the form of dressing would have to do with what symbols, for instance, do different people have or are, what different symbols people are entitled to and what others are not entitled to and why, and so on and so forth. For instance, I'll give you an example. Uh, if you, when, when we talk about the lion, the tiger, it represents strength. It represents leadership. It represents a whole lot of things. And so when you see someone wearing a necklace with the tooth of a lion, what does that tell you? To us, <laughs> it is very, very symbolic. When you see someone wearing a certain sign of an animal, what does that tell you? It is all representing. I will give an example. If you see someone in the grasslands of wearing uh, or carrying any symbol, either on the dress or as a staff, a lion. That tells me that that person is definitely a traditional leader or a leader of some sort. That is, that is the first thing. Uh, the other thing is you would understand that it is not everybody that will carry that. You are entitled to it, either by birth or it's been conferred to you because of something. Another symbol on the dress and the one to mention is the moon. The moon is in the sky, but the moon might represent to us much more than just that shining symbol. You see the moon as a shining symbol. Huh? Uh, if you see someone with a moon see behind the breast, such as this that I'm wearing, it is a whole message. It is intended to communicate something, which I would say within the standards of the West is a kind of a medal. It's a royal symbol confirmed by royalty to an individual to mean that you have de you are deserving of the title of a leader. You are deserving of this because we have found that you represent some form of purity because that moon also means the Kamwood. I don't know if the Kamwood is regular in, other, in most parts of Africa, but the Kamwood is really red. But it represents purity in most parts of the grasslands of Cameroon. It means that this person is pure in mind and character. This person is a leader. And so when you see this person wearing the moon on this dress, it means that person has been conferred the title of some kind of a leader. That person has distinguished his or herself. And so you can follow that person in, in a sense. So these are all different types of uh, symbols that I'm just mentioning. You also have the symbol of a bone. The gong is a musical instrument that is well known within the grasslands of Cameroon. It produces distinguished sounds. Okay. And when you see people wearing the gong, okay, that can tell you something about these people. They want to express themselves in different, different ways. So you can see the lizard, you can see different animals that are found within the environment from which the person is coming. But like I said, not everybody is entitled to every symbol. So um, if I understand you correctly, there is somebody who makes this distinction, who confers, um, who, who, who authorizes someone at a particular point in time, now you can wear this uh, symbol, now you can carry this symbol. Now, how does that work? Is it, are there ceremonies where these are conferred, do people get them from birth? How does it go about? Okay, beautiful. The, the first thing to understand about generally the people of the grasslands is we are a free people and we express ourselves through our culture. We express it and our culture would mean the language that we speak, the food that we eat, the dress that we wear. 
And now when it comes to these various dresses, each and every individual is free to wear a traditional dress. As a matter of fact, it is what we are expected to wear. So when you go to a ceremony, when people look at you, they will tell you you are not well dressed. What does that mean? They expect you to be dressed in a particular way which represents where you are coming from, your own. They expect you to dress in a particular way which represents your social position. Okay. Now, coming from this, it means everybody is entitled to wear the traditional dress. That is really how we should be identified in the first place, and which is part and parcel of what we as African people would have pushed really as, as part of our identity, Africa's identity to the rest of the world, which is culture. Dress would have really accompanied that all along. And so when you enter a city of African people, uh, especially in the grasslands where I come from, they tell you, you are not well dressed, it means you are expected to dress in a particular way. Now, when it comes to those other symbols, these are now aspects that distinguish you. So the dress is already there, but the elements of the symbols and so on are additional elements, paraphernalia, that come along now with your dress to distinguish you from what we could call ordinary people. Okay, so we are expected, first of all, to feel comfortable and to be part and parcel of the dress movement, which is already a very strong movement within most parts of Africa now. That is what we have that we are presenting to the rest of the world for a start. It is very, very important because this dress, like if you can see what I'm wearing here, is a lot of colors. It's a lot of colors. It is a lot of grace. The dress in itself is graceful. We are not just like other people who may just know. It's very, very graceful. So it's very defined. It's the way we want to be addressed. If you see somebody in what you call today toho, just wearing a toho, not without any symbol, uh, insulting somebody on the road. Of course, you know that that person does not know what he or she is wearing. You already understand that person is not entitled really to that dress because that dress gives another level. It upgrades you from just an ordinary person to somebody who has to be addressed, who has to be perceived in a particular way. So this is very, very important to us as people of the grass fields, as people of the African descent as a whole. You know, you, you mentioned something about... Um dressing in your traditional regalia and your attitude, the way you behave yourself. I think it's poignant. It's important that we just emphasize that whenever you are dressed in the colors of your people, carrying your regalia, it's no longer about you. You are talking about the people you come from. You're talking about yes. your ancestors. You're talking about your nation. You're carrying everybody in that yes. moment on yourself. So you need yes. to carry yourself with grace, with honor, with be the best you can be. Because you want that dressing to remain in the honor that it, it represents. Somebody dressed that way, they should remember you. They should remember what grace, what what politeness, what honor, what what discipline you 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 represent, and it should Absolutely. it should be it should be transferred to whoever shows up after you dressed like you are. I think that Absolutely. is just so important. So back to what we're talking about. So um, the symbols. How do people get those symbols? How do they, at what point do they get them? And I was just intrigued as I listened to you. If people don't know that these things exist, are they able to go into a store and buy them? Or should they, should those selling them not to be able to, to sell them to just anybody? You know, I, I think I just asked you two questions there. Yeah, that, that's a very beautiful question. Uh, how do people get these symbols? The first thing I want to say is the organization of most African societies before what we could call other forms of administrations that came into Africa, we are royals. We are royals. We are very dignified people. And so the strata of the society moves from the royals right down to where you have everyone. And so 
It's like what the Bible says, we are created in the image of God. We want to see ourselves in that very high level of image. That's the African person. And so we need to see our dress really as part and parcel of that thing that adds to our identity and that moves us to a very higher level of the human being. How we should be perceived. How do we get the symbols to generally? You can get it at different levels. First of all, by birth. If you are born into a royal family, okay, that is you already. You are entitled already to certain royal privileges. You could wear certain symbols because by virtue of the fact that you are coming from a palace, your father is a fawn. If you are working within the royal circles, you could also get some of the symbols because by virtue of the fact that you are close to the corridors of power, you can get certain symbols that you that are conferred on you or that you wear. If you do certain things within the society, for instance, when we listen to African stories and tales, we are told of stories of people who are able to catch a lion, catch an elephant, and so on. Okay. We have the royal hunt, for instance, in Kom, which is one of uh, the Kom uh, is part of the Tika in the northwest region of Cameroon. Now, when you catch a certain animal, it is a, to show, to distinguish you as a courageous person. You can be conferred with a particular symbol, and so on and so forth. So, and as well as if you offer a distinguished social service to your people, the people through the royalty confer particular signs and symbols to you. There are even fabrics that not just anybody would wear. If you wear that particular fabric, it tells the person who knows already that you are coming from this particular realm of the society, or you have been conferred this uh, fabric because of this, or by this uh, royal partisan and so on. That is already uh, an aspect of how you can be conferred uh, either one symbol, one fabric, one style of a dress, or another. Okay. So the second part of the question, uh, I think it's a very important aspect, which has to do with uh, the, the, the dynamics that we have nowadays. Can you just get into a shop and then pick up just one dress or another, one fabric or another, or which has any of these symbols or not? The first thing I want to say is, uh, based on the evolution of times and the fact that a lot of our customs and traditions have been commercialized as well, either by virtue of uh, media, mass media generally, uh, mass media and the, 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 the movement of culture and so on and so forth. It has become quite rampant that people might not necessarily have a good understanding of what a particular fabric means, what a particular symbol on a fabric means. Let alone even the people who are commercializing a dress, which is a very important aspect of our culture. And so nowadays, it is quite common that you would see someone who sees a fabric on you and likes it. Okay, this is beautiful, right? We are living in a free world. And then on passing, you see a shop and you see that particular fabric. And you go in and ask the cost, and they tell you, okay, it's 50,000 CFA, uh, which is about, uh, I don't know how many dollars. Or, I'm sorry, about a hundred dollars. Yes, and then okay. Is up for sales and you can buy it. The person buys it and the, and the person who is selling is more interested naturally in making his profit and selling than asking who you are, why you're buying it, and do, do you understand the meaning behind it. So you have that really happening much uh, nowadays. But the issue comes at this level. And like we said it is free to buy. You can buy. Of course, if it's in the shop, you can buy. But the issue comes on when you have to sit amongst a particular group of people who know what that dress is, who know what it signifies, who knows who know who is entitled to it and who not. So if it is walking with it on the streets, that is fine. But the point might come when somebody who knows you and your background see you in that particular family wearing a particular symbol. Okay, then there's an issue. Okay, there is an issue. Which means at the end of the day, we, we as African people, we understand that 
Our environment doesn't belong to us. We belong to our environment. And so do all these things. The dress and the symbols that we wear. We also belong to them. That means it should be properly conferred on you so that you understand the deep meaning behind it, the symbolism, the rep because it is about representation. And then you can wear it in all dignity. So it is not just about dress, it is about the knowledge, the understanding of what it is and what what you are that that you understand the meaning behind what you are wearing. You know what, Chinto, um, as you speak, I I cannot help thinking about what a disservice we are doing to ourselves when we do not educate our people. We have no avenue for teaching culture. Um, in the past, the home has been the seat of this um, informal education where parents um, tell the stories about the proper way to comport yourself, the proper way things are to be done customarily. Or they take their kids back home for holiday and when they go to festivals, they can easily see the distinction between who is wearing what and who's not wearing what and how it should be done. Then you bring up the important aspect of the commercialization. We have a, a people who love who they are, mm -hmm. but have no knowledge about who they are. So in a desire to reconnect with themselves, they just blindly go back and pick up anything and wear. And it's almost like you are stupid. In your, dis in your quest to do the right thing, you're just doing a significantly bad thing and don't know it. So we cannot emphasize enough. It is important for us to have these conversations, for us to know our culture, for us to go back to our parents. And it's sad to know that so many parents don't even know. You know, you, you almost need to go back to your grandparents to know the truth. So the generations that know this thing, the custodians of customs and tradition are dying out. And we just, oh, let's keep quiet. This is secret. This is, <laughs> it's so important. Don't talk about it. But yeah. in not talking about it, you're doing what you don't want to do. You're killing the tradition. It's dying out. And a new generation yeah. is coming up that knows nothing. Now, so... That brings me to my next question. Who yeah. produces this clothing? Is it our people who make the clothing? Do they weave them? Do they sew them? Do they dye them? Or where is this fabric coming from to be sold to us? That's a beautiful question, Mano. Um, our dresses are coming from different sources. First of all, we are really the first makers of our dresses. Unfortunately, African art uh, has just a commercial significance. And so uh, when it even came to the making of fabric, you would observe that we were not really doing it in very heavy commercial quantities. And so we had to bring in a lot of fabric from other lands. In Cameroon, for instance, we brought in a lot of fabric from Nigeria and from other neighboring uh, countries. And uh, we have the ones that we make. There's something very special about it, which you put uh, the, the fact that it's really hand finished. It is not really industrialized. It's not. Uh, it's not a machine finishing, which is which a lot of human qualities within it. Now. As times progress, we will realize that people from other cultures who understand that we love these dresses, we love these colors, we love this fabric, such as the Chinese, of course, they understand your needs and so they can work to meet up with your needs. But the fact is, how original will this really be? The fact is, you may have much more quantities than quality at one point. And coming to that, uh, I just want to share a story with you uh, based on what you were just saying. I happened to have traveled to the Fondacom as in Chinto, and we went to the Cameroon's uh, national capital. And while the fun was there, there was this young, beautiful girl from Com 
who had never seen the supreme traditional leader from the front. And so she came along with her mother to greet the front. Okay, when she came, the first thing we observed was she was wearing cowries on her head. What do cowries represent? Cowries are a royal symbol to us here in the grass fields. They represent a lot of things. At first, cowries were also a medium of exchange. But now cowries are reserved for people within royal circles. The fawn's wives, for instance. When you see that, you know you're not supposed to touch them. It is part, it's a very important part of the address. She had cowries on her head. So when she came in, she was taken to the presence of the fawn. And after she greeted the phone, the phone happily said, oh, this one has come to stay. <laughs> and so the other wives of the phone just took her to where the other wives of the phone were sitting. The mother started crying and we didn't know. <laughs> because they knew they were not going back home. She had come as the wife of a phone. So her dress had unveiled exactly what she wanted to be and how she wanted to be addressed until she was properly taken into the royal quarters. Uh, okay, okay, I will not tell you the rest of the story and how the rest went on, but it's just to say, you can see just how dress can play on your image, on what you represent or what you want to be or how you want to be addressed. But just in case you do not know it, it could be quite problematic, especially within the circles where people know what those things mean. <laughs> Tinta, thank you so much for that story. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> um, so, our people go through the pain of weaving this yes. fabric. I think yes. that delicate process equally makes it secret. That delicate Absolutely. process um, makes it and dears it to us. So it's just not, all fabric is not equal. It's, it's okay for it to be, to be accessible. It's okay for it to be, uh, for us to be able to have pieces of this fabric and wear them. But mm -hmm. it's also important to, to protect the, the commercialization of this uh, fabric. Absolutely. And, um, I would like to say that almost sending out a plea to the local administration to work with the government to be able to come up with with um, with terms upon which this local industry can be protected, and also reaching out to our people to say when you're buying, buy with understanding that when That's you correct. promote local industry it's going yeah. back it's it's your indirect way of supporting your own of getting the profit mm -hmm. back reinvesting yeah. it's it's it, you're investing back in your people you're supporting that industry you're saying let this grow and when you choose cheaper options know the source of the fabric you're buying and and That's try right. knowing that you can you're giving back you're, you're protecting local industry. You're just, just don't buy with, without thinking that you're selling yourself away. Because after you've worn this clothing and you've enriched someone else and your people are at the, at the lines begging for alms, do not forget that you were a part of the process of selling, Absolutely. of making your people poor of making your people destitute, you know. And you spoke about representing um, Africa yeah. through dressing. And yeah. I'd like to ask you, is there a part that um, dressing should play in the business arena? So uh, people of other cultures sell their customer as being fit for doing business. Um, yeah. If you go to Asia, the Asians do not shy away from having their traditional regalia as part and parcel mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of, of the business uh, society, the business milieu. Yeah. Neither, yeah. Is it, neither is it uh, um, wrong for people, in, even in the West, to wear what they call 
traditional to them in business yeah. in the business milieu i'm i'm struggling mm -hmm. to understand why we as the people of africa fail to see yeah. how our culture should be part and parcel of the business milieu what do you say about that uh i think this question is very important in terms of the economics of it what role the economics of it plays as far as influencing the the, the culture and the dress itself is concerned um it is worth noting that when you look at the trends within most african economies and especially because we are economies that are predominantly important a lot. And one of the things that would have uh, affected us as a continent in terms of economic progress would be the importation of even other people's cultures in, in, a, in a rather abusive manner. What do I mean by this? We are living in a world where we, we are living in a cross-cultural world. Culture is bound to move between people. What people admire from this culture, the peak and the attitude yes. But this does not, in a sense, mean that we have to embrace that of others and at one point even let ours down. When you look at the trend of the importation of dress in most African, we are importing the dresses of others, we are importing the culture of others. This is a very interesting phenomenon. It represents a very heavy part of our economy and capital flow, cash flow from African economies to other economies. And by this, sometimes the question might be, is our dress not good enough for us? Is it not beautiful for us, enough for us? Can we have sufficient variety in the designs of our dresses in such a way that we can have the casual, we can have that for the beach, we can have for different types of occasions and so on and so forth. And the answer to this is, yes, it is possible and it is already happening. So there is a very important need to reverse this trend. This is already ongoing with a lot of uh, young African entrepreneurs. To reverse this trend in the import importation of uh, Western design and so on and so forth. And to be able to replace that with our African fabric, with our African designs and so on and so forth. It may take a little bit of time, but it is already working. We have the possibility to do this and even bigger. And by doing this, we'll be promoting our own African entrepreneurs, the, uh, our fashion designers, those of the, 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 the fashion industry in Africa. Because the fashion industry is a very representative industry, not only in terms of the economic cash flow, but in terms of the representation of who the people are, the culture. That is really the point that we're trying to make here. And we are saying dress is a lot of money. When we keep importing these dresses, we will miss out on a very important aspect of the money that we would have been keeping, like you just mentioned, to be able to support the local entrepreneurs. Some African countries are already doing this by saying, oh, we need to promote our own designs. They are beautiful. We need to promote the, the fashion makers in the continent and to make much more fashionable designs that people will be comfortable with in a, cross, in a variety of circumstances, like you did mention. You, you want to go out for dinner, you want to, want to, you will have all designs that will fit with all uh, circumstances and occasions. This is very, very possible. And I think this will represent a very important aspect or side of the evolution of the African society and the economy and the culture in itself. Because the, the culture is a big driver of the economy at, at, at the same time. Um, I'm sure I'm in line with your question. Yes, you are. Okay. Very, very yes. much so. And to some restaurants, especially African yes. restaurants, and have yes. them have the the staff dressed in a part in in African tissue. It's sewn in a, in a more formal design. Um, uh, it, the question yes. though is: Should yes. the print and the design of the Togo, for example, or the let me uh -huh. use Ghana, the Kente, be the same representation which is now abundant in the market, now being used for beach designs. Shouldn't we have our people thinking and say, okay, yes, we've got beaches in Africa and we have got people going to the beach. And what would we wear, which would which will which will be 
hours to go to the beach um, versus yeah. it, it, without diluting the beauty and the elegance and the the symbolic representation, the secret nature of the Togo design and fabric by just copying that and creating sport wear, creating beach wear or office wear. Yeah. In your creativity, you're forgetting yeah. the secret yeah. nature of this look, what it yeah. should represent when you wear it, what it should yeah. represent when you carry it, when you're in it. It sh you should be That's in great. a different zone and considered a special people. So um, just sending out an appeal there. I, I yeah. love the fact that our people are trying to say, now we know this is beautiful. Now we know this yeah. is nice. But yeah. we can go a little further and say, we are much more than just copycats. We are much more That's than right. whatever has been done by our ancestors so many years ago. We cannot think you know so we we do realize that uh, there are things that are common to us look around you know yeah. think there are things we yeah. can do no one wears the jean fabric and turns around and yeah. uses the color of the jean fabric to sew a suit yeah. it's not done yeah. you yeah. know so we can't just take the same material and start doing different yeah. things with it you know what, what you're saying Mano, is very important in terms of the perception of the various fabrics that we have as well as all these aspects of the dress as a representation of our culture um it's very important like you said we have certain colors which we consider as sacred we have certain designs that we consider as not only sacred but even secret we have all of these things and so that is where the understanding of it comes in the understanding of it comes in it's very, very important. Um, the, 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 I'm very interested in this discussion because it has a very strong role in shaping what we had before, what we want to preserve, and what will likely be the state of this African dress. This, let us call it, this dress from the highlands that I am wearing from the, from the grass fields of Cameroon. What will it represent in the future? What will be the mutations? What is it that we need to understand about it and preserve? What is it about it that maybe we could, you know, try to water down uh, in terms of we could dilute it because of what we call the, the, the movement of cultures and all of that, you know. I think it is very, very important in this life because um, there is something very important about it. And those, uh, this very important thing is the significance that we hold. What is the significance? And you cannot downplay the significance. It would be like insulting a people. Like I said, if you wear a tower with a moon, and then you go and you see you charging somewhere and be, uh, insulting a woman or even a man, people who know that dress understand that. You are certainly, you don't know what you're wearing. You don't know who you are. So it is very important. For instance, today, we're looking at the national team of Cameroon, which is uh, it's an outstanding team in terms of uh, world performance in football. Okay, there, has, there are questions as to whether the team can start wearing some of these symbols that represent from what part of the world Cameroon is coming from. Okay, I think this should be a debate. How will you represent that on a sports way? How will you represent that on a beach way? How will you represent that? I think it is important, it's an important debate that needs to take place in a very, very conscious manner with those that have carried this importance of culture at heart. It is very, very important. And I, and I, that's where we, we, we continue to congratulate African someone for, you know, helping us be part of this debate, you know. <laughs> Oh, I think it will be a sad day to see a national team come up in um, in T-shirts, which are a uh, Togo design. I think it will be a time when our people have failed to understand. Um, I mean, they can they can wear the Togo and, and walk in, but to play in them, I, mm -hmm. I just think, I mean, we should be able to be creative enough to come up with something that represents sport 
You know, it's yeah. like wearing this beautiful suit and going in to go play soccer. Yeah. It should be something that doesn't make, it doesn't really look right. You know, I like the image that you just brought up, uh, that of a know? man wearing a suit and going to play soccer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, thank you very much, Mano. Maybe just one last thing you did mention also about carving because uh, part of our address is carved objects in the, in the grasslands. And yes, and when you look at because, like I mentioned, it represents where you're coming from, your origin, and so on. When you look at the cap, you can tell you where you're coming from in the grasslands. This cap, it has a flat head. When you look at this cap, you know this person is probably coming from Cork. When you look at the one with the cone, it will tell you, okay, coming from this part. You look at certain dress designs, you know this is coming from the Tunja, the Ndokplin, and so on. It's coming from Menchum Valley, it's coming from uh, the Bamlikela, and so on. I was just going to say you mentioned something about carving. Uh, carving generally was not an open art. That tells you something. It was a sacred art. Same as dress designing for us. It was mostly done really quite in hidden places, or not just in open, until quite recently. So maybe these are mutations, these are evolutions in the way we are going to market our culture. It is the changing times in which we live, and I think it is very important, as African someone who's already doing, that we continue to be part and parcel of this discussion, because the more we understand the origins, the roots, the significance, then progressively we can know how to decide how where do we move to with our culture especially when it comes to dress the food and so on when i see someone eat and he's a calm man and he's eating from i know this person is coming from Kong. if he's not from Kong, i can tell for instance so we need to tell these stories to our children we need to share these experiences we need to share this understanding more and more and I think that is the best way to build it, what we really call a stronger African society, which is first of all represented by its root, where the culture is. That also takes us to how um, strong the relationship between the traditional administration and, and the government administration is. Because these are things um, which should come up they should be able to protect tradition. They should be able to have a say in, 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 um, on the table when these things are being commercialized and say, no, this, this is how it's done. But I think it starts from the place of we have got to educate our people on what is ours and what is sacred and what they need to protect then you've got something to go protect at the national level. And even That's in negotiations with who's selling these patterns overseas, um, do they have rights to selling them? It's about, are these things patented? You yeah. know, those, those are questions yeah. that are coming up, which the administration really needs to take a look at. Absolutely. Yes, uh, Mano. It is very interesting to note that in most uh, African countries, you will see a ministry in charge of culture, which has as a primary role to promote the culture and to preserve it. Promotion means, first of all, preserving and finding the best ways to market to the rest of the world, and, you know, uh, to educate people about it. It is very, very important. But the, the, it might be a question of just how much do these countries put in to promote the cultures of those uh, countries, as well as understanding just how much, what role the cultures are doing to promote the image of those uh, countries. If you don't mind, I could share a story about uh, something that happened in Cameroon, uh, where one of the most important works of art in the Comla, which is the Fuakong, when it was returned to Cameroon in 1973, the president of Cameroon at the time, Ahijo, requested uh, the fun of Kong at the time to preserve this work of art in the National Museum because it had brought so much fame to Cameroon. It had made the rest of the world understand oh, there was a place in, uh, in the globe known as Cameroon. And of course, the, 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 the rule of the Kong people said, yes, of course, it's, it's a very important thing. We should keep this work of art in the National Museum, but on one condition, Your Excellency, because this art and my people are one. 
So if we have to keep it in national vision, it means I and my people, you have to provide enough space for us all to come and live in that museum. This is to tell us that not only our dress is part and parcel of us, we are part and parcel of everything that, you know, our dress, our food, our environment. That is us, the African people. It is part and parcel of us. You cannot really separate that from us. But over time, it seems there could be a separation, but I think this is not workable in the long run. More and more, we see a strong need to embrace it, to understand it, to embrace it, and to promote it to the very best that we can. Because it is who we are. It's very, it's our very identity. It's everything about us, our past, our present, and our future. Absolutely. And you heard it, ladies and gentlemen, from the Chinto. Uh, the, the honors is upon all of us to protect our customs, to know our customs, and to uphold them. I hope you enjoyed this edition. Do remember to subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and share. Until next time, I am Manondo Akono saying thank you for responding to this summer. <music>